we got ourselves on a mission to help 1 million young people to actually future-proof their careers. At the end of the day, it's not even so important which skill you possess. It is all about the ability and willingness to learn, remain focused and adapt. And yes, to get some traction in the community, you will need a strong set of networking and communication skills. The plans uh, of today can be useless tomorrow, really. So we shouldn't plan so much ahead of us. I really see Brainster as a major player in the talent economy. We're here to help the future tech leaders on the market. Hello, Recursive community, and welcome to our next live session here with someone from Skopje. The mental driver for innovation ecosystems is their capacity to attract, retain, and develop qualified talent and innovative brains. And although the trends are slowly reversing in the past couple of years, countries in the Southeast Europe are still affected by the massive brain drain from the past couple of decades. Especially proactive in this field is Brainster, a tech ed company on a mission to help young people future proof their careers. It all started in Skopje in 2015, and today Brainster has a community of 9,000 alumni. 85% of them have already found a job, and they also have three more campuses in Zagreb, Ljubljana, and Vienna. I'm very delighted to welcome here with us today Alexander Kuminski. Chief Strategy Officer of Brainstar. Alex, welcome. Hi, Rina. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you very much for, for having me with you today. Uh, and really compliments for everything that you guys are doing so far with the recursive. You really cover a region that has uh, such a great potential in the years to come. I'm really sure that uh, you will be on the front line reporting about the progress of our tech and innovation community. We are here to help you out with any insights on the market you may need. Thank you very much for these kind words. I'm actually pretty sure that uh, at some point we will be also reporting about the uh, alumni from uh, your campuses who have created something really, really great and innovative. I hope so. You identify with this mission to help young people <clears throat> future-proof their careers? What are the fundamentals in a world that is uh, changing ever more, ever more fastly and uh, accelerating? And even now, due to COVID, we've been observing a massive change in the way we work and the way we're going to work in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much for the question. We started off as a company in uh, 2015, and our main purpose was helping young people learn new skills that will make them grow in their careers. And remember, uh, online education was not the most popular option back then. So everybody had doubts about online, especially online education. Uh, but things are changing very fast. So since then, we have grown exponentially. And we have learned a lot uh, on our way. So we got ourselves on a mission to help 1 million young people to actually future-proof their careers. But now uh, I start to question myself, is it possible to actually future-proof your career in a world that is changing so fast? We don't have a choice uh, but to try and keep up with everything that's happening around us. When we say future-proof a career, uh, it takes much more than a, than a certain skill or technology. It takes a combination of soft skills, of a mindset and uh, technical skills. In order to, to kind of remain competitive on the market, uh, you must communicate to the outside world. Networking has changed dramatically. Um, I read someone's post on LinkedIn, uh, I think it was a couple of days ago, saying, I'll just hang out there on LinkedIn. Let me know if you're up for a chat. I mean, the guy had more than 100 comments in a couple of hours. So it might sound sad, but we must adapt to the current situation. At the end of the day, it's not even so important which skill you possess. It is all about the ability and willingness to learn, remain focused and adapt. So if we had to make it a bit more concrete, what skills or knowledge you mentioned, mindset, I actually yeah. love this, this word will young people need in order to prepare for uh, their future needs, uh, especially in the market in Southeast Europe? What is your prediction? How can you prepare for such, such an uncertain future coming at us? 
For example, what happens if things like graphic design and digital marketing get mostly automated in, in the next five years and uh, Python programming as well? Young people must remain curious about new ideas and technology. They must uh, possess strong communication skills and working ethics and, of course, be able to learn and adapt, most of all. The plans uh, of today can be useless tomorrow, really. So we shouldn't plan so much ahead of us. Young people must find a way to, to follow trends in the, in the world of technology and innovation. And they must find a way to absorb only relevant information for their growth. When they make their decisions about uh, where they would like to work, they, they should start with the industry first, make their research about all opportunities and growth and uh, then narrow it down to a company. So not the other way around. So you don't just pick a company and, oh, I want to I wanna work there. No, I think you should focus on the industry first and then uh, narrow it down to a company. Another very important aspect is that we should all develop a mindset for continuous growth. According to, to a study that we have made internally, people in the future will need to reskill more often than ever. Uh, for example, even now, as you mentioned, uh, UX designers need to, to understand analytics or know how to code certain things in order to offer a better quality service to their clients or to their own products. So it really... Uh, it, is al it also happens in the to the front-end developers. Uh, more often, they need to know UX, UI design. If we, you know, go back to, to, the, to the present and also to, to brainstorm for, for a second, what are the main gaps in the education and job market that you're trying to bridge uh, with uh, your programs and the industry? I think that the major gap exists in the... In, as I mentioned, the, the connection with the industries and understanding the real needs of the industries. It is very important uh, to point out that we don't, see, um, we don't see the formal education as a competitor, but rather as a partner on, on bridging all these gaps. I mean, we need to work everybody together in order to produce uh, some high quality talents. We communicate with our partner companies, uh, with educational institutions, industry experts and uh, external consultants. And once we decide on the products uh, we launch, we focus on the quality of the program and the methodology of learning a new skill. The programs or our programs follow a methodology that is, um, that is designed uh, not only by academics, but also practitioners in order to make sure that we prepare the students to, to be ready and start working after the boot camp. So there's no need for any other um, extra knowledge after the boot camps. So, and most importantly, the curriculum has to be reviewed and updated once a year, not wait three to four years to maybe make small changes in the curriculum. I think if something is better now than it was uh, yesterday, we should improve it right away. Why wait for a couple of years? And, um, and trust me, I get surprised every day by the outcome uh, of the students. So usually one of the main problems with traditional education has been exactly this one, that uh, you study something and then you graduate and then you go uh, to search for a job and you realize that uh, all of a sudden the market needs something completely different. I remember it actually happened with me like that. And employers face the challenge of not having talent that fits their needs. How are you actually solving this? In my research, I, I also saw that you built something like a whole ecosystem of um, different platforms, which are also uh, for uh, recruitment of, of talent, reaching also in a different way, education and the industry. Can you explain a bit more about it? I think that the education providers um, must keep the communication wide open with the industries and work together in order to adjust the programs. All educational programs must be aligned with the industry at all times. And uh, I mean, why wait for three, four, five, and sometimes even more years to make adjustments when we can do it in a month or two? And we need to remain agile in order to be competitive and grow. Looking at it from a, from a long-term perspective, we need to spend more time with the high school students if we want to tackle the, the problem from, the, from its core 
perspective and help them with the decisions uh, when they make their future, when they make the decisions about the, their future careers. We need to, to, to provide them with enough information before they make the decision for their career because it's one of their major decisions in their lives. And another major challenge that remains um, in the use uh, is the use of technology in education. It is different everywhere. There's an exponential growth in technology and uh, we really must keep our programs up to speed uh, with the latest trends in the industry. It is the only way to, to produce high quality talents that will, that will answer the, um, the present and the future needs of the companies. And again, I will stress out that the programs must be reassessed and adjusted more often. It is, it is just crucial. You see some kind of increase in demand now due to COVID, now that you know companies maybe from uh, Western economies are forced to cut cost and optimize their budgets. Do you see some kind of increase uh, in companies asking for R&D talent uh, or R&D development here in Eastern Europe? Definitely. I mean, uh, we see an increase in every aspect of our businesses. So even uh, education. So a lot of people are looking to to learn a new digital skills. Uh, there's a lot of fluctuation in the labor market as well. So there's a lot of, uh, there's an accre increased activity in people looking for jobs and people or companies posting new jobs, new job openings. And thirdly, uh, there's a lot of people or companies rather that are looking for other hubs uh, rather than their own home countries because now they have access to to the world thanks to the corona crisis i think companies are becoming more natural in working uh, remotely so i think it is um, remote work is here to stay you mentioned also before that you developed these co-innovation programs which are available for startups uh, if i'm not wrong so because we have a lot of founders in our audience uh, can you share a bit more about how this works and what kind of projects are we talking about? How do you make sure that the work uh, quality fits the needs uh, of a you know, dynamic environment like startup? I would say that a couple of our most uh, exploited partnership programs uh, are the ones that you mentioned. So we offer them to not only to startups, uh, but to companies of different sizes and structures. So those, those partnership programs are, are co-innovation partnership and hiring partnership programs. Ultimately, both have the same purpose for the companies, identifying quality talents and taking them on board their companies. So our partner companies look at, look at Brainster as a long-term hiring partner, if you like. So they see us as a is a sustainable channel for, for, for recruiting high quality talent. Nevertheless, uh, as you probably know, everyone wants to taste a bit of the cake before they, they, they kind of decide to take it. So this is where the co-innovation partnership program takes place. So no matter the industry that the partner company is coming from, our students can help by, by developing an ongoing or a future project. The students give out a unique edge to the project while they're being mentored by the instructors on the boot camps. They all come from different backgrounds, uh, have different experiences, and they always offer a unique perspective perspective to the challenge, really. I would say that if, if anyone in your audience is interested to, to have a project which is uh, co-developed by the student, make sure you get in touch with us or with you guys uh, in order to discuss into more details. It is a very simple operation where we actually schedule an intro call. We discuss about several potential projects. And uh, once we prioritize the list, the partner prepares a brief on the project so that instructors can actually look into more details of the project and give the final go, making sure that it can be done by the students. The company will, uh, will need to make a brief video presentation explaining about the company values, about project expectations, and the, the students can start working. So they will be mentored and guided by the instructors throughout the development process and uh, until fully delivering the, the project to, to the partner company. There's no significant cost in terms of this program compared to the value that you actually get. So there's several quality solutions on the project. 
access to potential employers or, or interns that you have seen in action. To me, it's a no-brainer. The yeah. students actually put the work that they have done in their portfolios. So they don't start from zero when they start looking for a job. They have several projects that they're built and they can just build up upon that. From your perspective, which future of work and education trend will have the most actual impact on our market here in the next few years? Do you see work from anywhere becoming like a norm in the post-COVID world? You mentioned that uh, we're becoming more naturally remote. How is it going to affect the emerging markets uh, exactly in Southeast Europe? In my perspective, I think that uh, remote uh, work has proven employers uh, that it can be even more effective than office work in some cases yes sure it's nice to have an office uh, but working remotely opens up so many other aspects of life which myself personally would personally would not like to lose once COVID-19 is gone so I really like working remotely I think it's a nonsense to say that remote work will be the new norm. In my perspective, it already is, especially for the digitalized companies. So really, everybody is looking for, for something new. Overall, the labor market is very dynamic at the moment, and people are switching jobs and looking for new opportunities like never before especially when there are no borders when working remotely. So we help our students to find jobs really all across Europe. Uh, nobody cares if, if your workers are located in Macedonia or Croatia or Slovenia or Bulgaria. Everybody's just looking to get the work done and get on with their lives. But if you look uh, from the perspective of the businesses now, uh, more than ever, we, we don't need to look for talents only locally. So there are so many other options to find even better talents that we might have locally. And the, the beauty of it is that the technology allows us to do so. The same thing happens in education. The students get so much more when they're learning online. We're trying to explain this to our students uh, daily. They get access to instructors and mentors from all across the globe. When it used to be on a physical location, there were stuck, I would say, with the instructors and mentors locally. So now it's just the world is a, is, a, is a marketplace. But when we speak about the future, you know, I know that uh, you've uh, built these campuses in, you know, in Skopje, in Zagreb, in Ljubljana, in Vienna. Uh, but now that everything is becoming uh, more remote friendly, uh, where do you see the future development of Brainster in Southeast Europe? Are you... Um, how are you benefiting from this borderless uh, development that we're observing? I wouldn't say that we are benefiting, uh, but we're here to help help the future tech leaders on the market. Mm -hmm. So I really see Brainster as a major player in the talent economy. We are now starting to see the results from the actions that we did three, four, five years ago. So we have, so far, we have helped close to 10,000 people to learn a new digital skill. And in the last year only, we have helped maybe hundreds uh, of people to find the job uh, they always dreamed of. Having all this in mind, I would like to see Bracer as a center for education and innovation, creating the future leaders in tech, equipping the people with the, with the right set of skills um, and mindset to develop new products, uh, services, and technologies uh, in the region. To me, it's a, it's a, it's a noble task. Um, I have goose, goosebumps while I'm speaking this, but uh, I think we have the team and, uh, and the vision to do this. That's a great ending of our interview. Um, really touching actually what you said at the end, uh, goosebumps. And it is definitely a noble task. And um, I know that you, as much as I, are both very optimistic about reversing this uh, brain drain that happened and actually turning it into a brain game, especially with what you're doing, guys, and also with us, you know, sharing uh, success stories of, of these ecosystems and uh, giving good examples to what is actually possible here in Southeast sure. Europe. Um, so I wish you best of luck.